Welcome. Welcome to yet another scintillating, heart-stopping, pulse-pounding edition of But That's Not Important Right Now, No, 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 No. Actually, no. But it's not scintillating or pulse pulsating or whatever it is you just said. Pulse it's pounding. Pulse pounding. Pulsating. Throbbing. <laughs> hey, hey, dude, you on your own with that one, right? Yeah, you will be. All right. I so we're not, even, we're not no. doing that today. Today. Not today. Get, uh, not, not today, today. Papi. Sorry, if you if you guys are looking for the porn heavy descent. Yeah, Sorry, forget it. That's, 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 not happen. Yeah. that's not gonna happen. We're calling this yeah. our chill out session. Yeah, um, this is this is a chill out session. This is we what have the, no, yeah. we have no real plan for today because we've been on the go for the last woo, four weeks. We've had idea after idea thrown at us, and um, yeah, and, and and we've we've taken all into consideration. The only thing that we weren't able to do was to get the client services people on. On you know, I was trying to get um, Kendall or uh, Randall to come together, and Avi too yeah. to come together, and yeah. that 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 hasn't worked out. Um, I also invited who is now my client, and I want to give her a shout out, Francesca Hector, and she she Hi, said she she said she would come on, but I haven't yes. formally invited her yet because I don't know what I don't know what the structure of that talk would be you know okay. because she's 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 extreme client side so i want to be very careful i don't want to i don't want to you know and and, and <laughs> she owes me money no no she doesn't owe me money <laughs> the company she works so owes me money so i don't no, want to yeah. please yeah specify huh? yeah i don't want to i don't want to um i i don't want to get into you know that that kind of i call it minefield that that situation um, right just yet. She's happy to come and just talk any kind of rubbish because, you know, she was part of us with the agency and all that. And she would love to, and she was on before, you know, yes. she, she's just I, a sweet I But I, I just don't want to, I just don't want to lead people to f believe that, you know, I could just bring on my clients and talk to them however I feel like it. That's, that's not it. I, I, I want to keep a professional relationship with my clients. And even though she's a friend, she's still a client. So that, so I mean, one of the probably things you could talk about is having friends as clients. <laughs> but before we start, I'm Ian Reed, and I'm Jared Butts. And for some reason, um, fate brought the two of us together in this world of advertising. In fact, we were working at the same agency. Well, Ian has been working at the agency far longer than than I than I was. I I was there for like about what? <laughs> I just thought of how many years I worked at the agency. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was there no, for eight and a half joke, years. No, but the joke is, Jared, I was at yeah. another agency and used to come in to get paid from that agency and used to sit down. It used to be on French Street. This is true. Yes. Street. And somebody That's came true. me back and, and told me. Do you know that Jared Butts is in the is in the um is in the well it wasn't we didn't call it a foyer. It's like a little because the agency was yeah. like in a house, it was like a little porch area with us with a chair, right? <laughs> and right. and I just stuck my head out and there you were rocking back and forth in the chair talking to yourself. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's that's Jared. <laughs> you had more hair then. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot more hair, hair back then. So, so yeah, you you technically will, if you want to call it working for the agency that I was looking for, technically, because you were doing radio with Chris. I did. I, I don't did know what of, I don't know what you did for that agency. I, I don't know if you remember what you did for that agency though, because their clients were sudden sales. The clients were sudden yeah. sales. They had yeah. West Mall at one point. I, I can't remember. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, Most likely I, it was Southern Sales. Most yeah. likely it was that. Because I remember I remember doing ads for all sorts of clients and all sorts of agencies back in the day. Because I I started out, I, in fact, the very first ad I ever voiced, it was from um, McCann. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, that was 
a long time ago. We're talking about 1989 when I was a teenager. Mm. So yeah, I've been, I've, I've, in fact, I've been voicing ads far longer than I've ever been, ever, ever done radio because that's where I mm. am now. I used mm-hmm. to be a writer, a copywriter, um, mm-hmm. an award-winning copywriter. Let me hasten to add, for um, you know, when I was working at the agency, and mm-hmm. now I am back to um, my old stomping ground because before I got into advertising, I was in radio. So yeah, I've I've come to to appreciate the best of of both worlds and the worst of both worlds too. That's but, um, why. That's that's primarily yeah. why I thought that you and I doing this podcast are uh, we yeah. technically celebrating 365 days of doing this podcast we, we it's not really because we took we took breaks uh we had a break for obviously in december and we had a break way back in june of last year actually we started in may yeah. and we did we, we did we did 10 episodes and we were like okay now we, we need to take a break and we took a break and we came back and then we took another break i think in I can't remember. I think it was September. I, 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 I think we took a break. We, we took a break in 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 late November, early December, and we came back in January. And we've been we've been um, going nonstop ever since. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I I said to Jared, I said, you, you know, I say I say I say to I say to Jared, why why do we just why do we just do a podcast together? He's sunny, and and and, and Jared. Jared is, can you do the, the, the little chicken, chicken little was one of the characters' names. Um, it's, what was he, the, the rooster's name is what? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I say, I say, son, I say, son, you, no. that's not how you Dude. do it, son. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Yeah? Now, I, I like to think that I'm very good as a voiceover actor in terms of doing particular voices. But this is where I give full props to Mel Blanc, God rest his soul, the, the god of all voiceover actors, because I, I can attempt to do Foghorn Leghorn. I can attempt Foghorn Leghorn. That's but to right. actually, But to actually do Foghorn Leghorn is something that, you know, it requires a lot yeah. of... Let's see how... Yeah. It, well, I think if I, were, if I were to do Foghorn Leghorn, it would sound something like this. Now, see here, now I say, now see here, son, that is not the way you're supposed to do it. You're going to behave like a mouse in a burlesque show, that kind of thing. And yeah, that's the closest, that's the closest I could ever get to do it. And which is not to say that, you know, um, yeah, I mean, you, but, but the thing that, that I, I have to keep in mind as a, as a voiceover actor is that you, you capitalize on your strengths. And you see what you can do to improve your weaknesses. Now, mm. obviously, there is no way, I mean, as great as Mel Blanc was, there is no way that Mel Blanc could have done the voice of Fred Flintstone. Mm. He was great, you know, but mm. and and only certain actors could could pull it off. Mm-hmm. Um and 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 you can and and even the greatest voiceover actor in the world can do all the voices. He can do voices that are within his realm, within his, his, yeah. his range of, of his repertoire. If he can do particular voice, he can do voice A, he can do voice B, he will stay away from that because he doesn't yeah. want to sound like a complete idiot. Yeah. That being said, if, you're, if you've got a trained ear and you listen to the stuff that Mel Blanc used to do back then, you could actually hear his natural voice hidden in voices like, um, for example, Bugs Bunny, Yosemite Sam, Pepe Le Pew, um, uh, those are uh, Daffy Duck, obviously, Porky Pig, Sylvester the Cat. All those voices that you can hear, you can hear them. You can hear the, the little, the little twinge of the little, you know, the, the, his, his normal speaking voice. You can hear it. So yeah. again, to the trained ear, you, you can you can you can detect it. Yeah. Uh, and even with me. I mean, I can get to do particular voices. And of course, people are going to hear, um, you know, traces of vestiges of, of, of my voice. That's to be expected. That's what you can, that's what you expect to be as a voice of an actor. You gotta, you, but you gotta, it's, it's also about acting too, huh? You yeah. can't just do the, you can't just imitate the voice. Imitating yeah. the voice is one thing, but to imitate the voice and actually act it out is yeah. something that, 
I've always I've always believed them. And yeah. um, sometimes if you're if you're if you're doing the voice and you're acting it out, you get into a lot of trouble. I remember when I was um, at the agency. This was back in in '05 because something had happened with another. I was I was working at another agency at the time, mm -hmm. and how how was it? We were absorbed. Into, yeah. into our parent into our parent agency. This was back in 05, like I said. Yeah. And um, I was there the Friday, and all of a sudden, being in the agency, people started asking me if I could do voices. And this was like on a Friday, and you were there. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody had asked me to do Daffy Duck. And I said, okay, not a problem. I think I can do it. So the first thing that came out of my 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 mouth was the, the scene where he meets the abominable snowman, and Daffy mm -hmm. Duck goes, "Put me down, please. You're hurting me." <laughs> and then and then I I really go all out and say, "I ain't no bunny rabbit." <laughs> and you, I remember this. You were mortified <laughs> because I think and there was a. There was a there was like this this background hum that, that, that was that was going on, uh, and I remember when I had said it like that, everything had just come to a complete stop, and I was like, "Oh my God, what the hell did I just do?" <laughs> <laughs> but that was yeah, that was the kind of yeah, yeah. You were mortified. You told me, uh, J Jared, you 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 need to not do that. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, so I I was that, but you see that's part of the course. That is what you would, um again. That is what that is what you you would expect from 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 somebody who's done it like that. Uh, it is it is it is uh it, it, it it's I I mean it's not like I I got up one day and I decided hey you know what I'm going to be a voiceover actor. That's not how it was. Mm -hmm. That's not how it worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like I remember doing it from from you know the first voices I ever did. I did I must have done it from a very young age, and in fact, the first voice I ever did was um the first voice I ever did was voiced by Mel Blanc, originally voiced by Mel Blanc. So mm -hmm. I mean, from the age of eight, he had an influence in my life without mm -hmm. even realizing it. I didn't even realize it, and the first voice I ever did was that of Barney Rubble. Mm. And um, from that moment on, it was it was just like yeah, I just went all out. Uh, I loved reading. I loved voicing characters from comic strips, and I would imitate the sound effects as well. It, it was something that I enjoyed doing, but it, it drove my poor grandfather nuts because it was like, hey, what? 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 What do you what do you hope to achieve for doing all of this crazy shit? <laughs> People would think I'm trying to hurt you or something. It's a little, you, you see, it's it's about it's about lending authenticity to the character. I don't give a shit about that. People think <laughs> you lost it. Think I, I'm murdering cows or something. Yeah, you know, or something like that. I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and so uh, yeah, that was that was my thing. I remember just just you know the reason why I, I was like into comic strips and and comic books was that I would read the characters. I would do all the characters, whether they were male, whether they were female, whether they were super villains, whether they were hobos, whether they it didn't matter. I was doing it because mm -hmm. it was something that I wanted to, it was something that I, 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 I felt a great deal of, 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 of joy and, 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 and freedom of expression, that the kind, that kind of thing. But as mm -hmm. I got older, they realized, you know, my grandfather and my uncle, they realized, hey, wait a minute, you know what? Um, this is something that he really enjoys doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's, um, let's, let's not try to discourage him. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the most important part, I mean, that's not trying to discourage him. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. But I'm always interested, Jared. You, yeah, you went away for a little bit. You went. You live. You yeah. you, you you visited abroad. I think you went to, uh, yeah. to visit family or something. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Went to see other. Yeah. 
For how long? Mm. How long did you go there? I was in Seattle for like about, oh God, must have been in Seattle for, for, for a, good, a good while, actually. Must have been about, about like about half a year. It's probably like mm-hmm. about six months in Seattle, mm-hmm. just uh, just just examining, looking, trying to figure out what to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I had to come back because there were certain obligations that I had to attend to. And mm-hmm. I had to take care of, of, of my, of my, of my immediate family. Mm-hmm. And, um, which is why, which is why I was, you know, I'm, I'm still here now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, th- that's just, that's just, again, that's the way it was supposed to happen, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I must say that I did have a, a, a great time there in that the, the art scene in that particular city. The thing about Seattle, and this is something that, 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 I, that I've, I grew to realize, it is not like, say, it does not have a fast-paced vibe of New York. Yeah. And New York yeah. is more frenetic. It's, it's, everything is happening. But the people in Seattle are far more, shall we say, laid back and easygoing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it's a big city, yes, mm-hmm. but it's got a, a different kind of, of, of vibe. And that if people it just feels laid back. almost Canadian because it's, it's so close. Well, because it's, so, it's so close. It's more yeah, Canadian than American. Very, yeah, but that's, that's probably why. You know, Canadians, more, aren't, yeah. Canadians aren't rush around and do things fast. They're like, Hey, we'll get it done. Don't worry. And that's usually that. And, and Seattle kind of lends itself to that because of it, where it is. Now, I've never been, yeah. but obviously, you know, yeah. I've, I've heard about it. But yeah, yeah, is it as rainy as they say it is? Here's the thing when I was there, because I was there in like, at first, I got there like in about, I think it was like in May of, of 98 that year. The thing is, they told me, they warned me that it was going to rain. And I said, well, okay, I'll walk with the, um, you know, appropriate rain gear. I'll have my umbrellas and everything. And they told me that, and they also told me because it was summer, summer was just starting. And they said that, uh, now, whatever you do, when you go out at night, always remember that it's going to be kind of nippy. And I said, oh, come on, summer, <laughs> please. <laughs> Stupid me thinking, you know, hey, you know, this is gonna be, this is gonna be like, it's gonna be like 20, 25 degrees Celsius. I can, I can live with that. Uh huh. When it dropped to fifteen, I was like, holy god, I want to die. <laughs> I said, I'm not accustomed to this. That's what they call it. That's what they call being the, the fast Trinidadian. The fast Trinidadian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be damn fast. <laughs> be damn fast. And here I am, you know, squeezing my nuts off in, in, in. Well, I, you see, the thing about it is, uh, what what we would think is cool to us as, as Trinidadians is just mm-hmm. like a normal day at the office for for, for some for some Americans. You know, mm-hmm. 16 degrees Celsius, they'll go walk around. It's like, yeah, 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 nothing, you know, no big deal or anything like that. And mm-hmm. and when it came to to the to the even colder months, oh lord, I yeah, I I I really missed I really missed Trinidad. I think for the first time, I missed I, I really missed Trinidad. The warmth of it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and but um, but it was interesting. I made a lot of friends when I was there, and um, you know, it was it was it was just trying to to break into into the market, into the voice of the market. It was tough. I mean, even when even when I I remember a time when I did something. I mean, looking back, you know, I I I, I had to try something. I don't mm-hmm. regret ever having done it. But mm-hmm. I remember sending a demo to a guy who used to work at Nickelodeon. He was the uh, director of talent. And he was really impressed with, the, with, my, with why I had sent it. Mm-hmm. And he told me that we would love to have you, but the problem is that you're not an American. Mm-hmm. And you need to, you need to, you know, um, Talk with your with your with your with the, with the embassy and see what you can do because under on, you know if it were left up to him I would have been there already. But yeah. Again, they had to, and I think it was a the thing about it is a, it, it it was a, getting there. I mean, it was, it was tough. I don't know what it's like now. I'm sure, 
I mean, maybe the immigration rules have been relaxed. I don't know. Maybe not. But it was, it was, it was hell hard back then to get to get into the states because you know reasons. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that was that was something that I that I did, and I but I don't regret ever having done it because I I knew back the, I knew then and there when he told me that he liked what he heard. Yeah, I knew I was in with a chance. I knew that I had that that ability to do it. And it's it's something that has never really left me. The desire is still there. Yeah, you know, I would love to. I would love to to do. I mean, one of my, one of one of the things I've always wanted to do was just um, like do uh, uh, you know, like if they ever had a, a revival of the Batman series, I would have mm-hmm. loved to do one of the main characters. I would have loved to do Mark Hamill's the Joker. Well, not necessarily mm-hmm. Mark Hamill, yeah, because Mark Hamill, Joker. Is Mark Hamill. Yeah, you know, because Mark Hamill is Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill's Joker is Mark Hamill's Joker, and there is no way you could, you could even try to approximate to get to that level. So what I'm trying to do is come up with my own version of it to, to yeah. see what, to, to, to see how I could do it. How would I be able? What would what would my version sound like? Yeah. And of, you know, because you you can't compare. You can't. You can't. It's 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 damn near impossible. To do, I mean, everybody thought that Jack, you know, Jack Nicholson's Joker was the best, and there was no way they could, they could top Jack Nicholson's Joker when he did Tim Burton's Batman in '89. No one mm-hmm. thought that, that could happen. And then mm-hmm. Heath Ledger comes along, God rest his soul. He ends up doing an even, an even, I wouldn't say a better Joker, but a, the Joker to suit the time, which was in, mm-hmm. um, I think it was in '08 when he did The Dark Knight. So that mm-hmm. was a, that was a, that was, and of course you have. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, who did his own version of it. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say that. You know, you look at, at these three actors, and you wouldn't necessarily compare them, because that's impossible to do. It would be unfair, and I think downright disrespectful to their performances and their craft. So it is best to say that we should appreciate and celebrate them for for what they did. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like you can you can look at you can look at at, at at Michael Keaton's Batman and you can say that there's some positive aspects behind his performance, just as much as you can look at Christian Bale's Batman and you can say there are some positive aspects behind that particular performance. So don't you know? But I, I don't think anybody would be faulted if you could look at George Clooney's Batman and say, "Well, now nah, George Clooney shit, forget that." <laughs> but even George Clooney, even George Clooney said it. Even George Clooney said it. You know, he said that he it was just something that 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 he did. It wasn't something that he put his heart into. Mm-hmm. It was just something that he just he just looked at it and he said, "Okay, what the hell? I'll do it." Um, but I mean, but you know, the, but again, if you're doing if you're doing something like 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 that, if you're doing anything like that, whether you're a voiceover actor or an actor, the best thing, the best approach, is to have respect. For your work and not to do it half-assed because mm-hmm. if you're going in there half-assed and you're kind of wishy washy and you're thinking i don't know if i can do this i don't know if i can if you mm-hmm. go if you if you go in there with that kind of mindset you're screwed mm-hmm. so you go in there and you go in there with confidence and even if you fail spectacularly which is which could happen if you were to fail spectacularly at least you would take comfort in the knowledge that you gave it your all. And that is, and that, I mean, that applies to any particular, if you're talking about the creative aspect of, 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 of things, you gotta, that, that's how you gotta do it. You gotta, you gotta throw everything into it. You gotta push everything into it. Because if you don't do that, if you don't respect your work, it's, it's one thing, self-respect is one thing. Respecting yourself is one thing, but if you don't res- genuinely respect and love what it is that you do, if you don't have the pa- oh dear, if you don't have the, the p word, the passione, <laughs> yeah. if you do not have the if you do not have the passione. Well, in this case, in this, in this case, it's it's the right it's way not, of using it. it. This is the correct no, way right of using it. It yeah. is the correct way of using it. If you don't so have I the passion, say, then if you don't have it, if you don't have it, then you might then you might as well forget it. And, yeah. and and just and just and just you know, but 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 at least at least the least you could do is try. If you if you if you 
if you didn't if you didn't try, the cost would be your soul. To quote um, mm -hmm. William Shatner's Captain Kirk in Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and again, you know, there are you're gonna have <clears throat> pardon me, you're gonna have comparisons. You look at Leonard Nimoy's Spock, which is so which is so, so iconic, and then you look at Zachary Quinto's Spock, and you say to yourself, well, again, it's the same thing. You don't necessarily compete. Each actor has his or her own strengths, and they used it to their own respective to their to their own respective abilities. That's something that 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 that, that, that um, you know again, and people are going to come up with comparisons. They're going to say, "Well, I don't appreciate. Um, I think Zachary Quinto's performance is just as good as, as Leonard Nimoy's, and and there's nothing you can you can you can't convince me otherwise." Fine. And then there are those mm -hmm. who say, "Well, you know, let's stick with the original. I like the original, and that's fine too." But mm -hmm. that's something that, that 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 again, that is to be expected if you are if you are coming up with a with a with anything, whether it's uh, uh, doing a, a voiceover or uh, a creative campaign, we didn't listen. You showed me something. Mm -hmm. You showed me something a couple of days ago, and this is in celebration of of, of Pride and Month, mm -hmm. where Burger King of Austria mm -hmm. did a particular deal, and they were talking about they were talking about in celebration of Pride Month two buns. Or two bottoms and two tops. So they take the two tops of a bun, put the meat in between them, or they could take the two buns, two bottoms, and put. And I see where they were getting at. They were trying to. I don't think that it was. It was. It was, it was a malicious. It was malicious. There was nothing malicious. No, behind no, it. no, no. It wasn't malicious. They, they, no. meant, they meant well. They meant well. I think they meant well, but they didn't really. You see, this is where. The, the, the thinking things through part. This is what is important. If you're going to make a statement, the least you could do is just ask, not your your ad people, but ask the regular people. Yeah. Invite them in to ask them, hey, what do you think about this? Do you think this is a good idea? If not, why not? Yeah. And what do you think we should do? If the, if you think that that's that's if you think that sucks, what is it that you could do? What do you think we should do? And they ended up saying, and, and the thing about it is, if I read some of the comments, and they said, you know, if they could just say that they that they um that they're an equal opportunity employer, and they don't discriminate against against um the LGBTQI community or something like that, if you don't mm -hmm. discriminate against them, and you and you you know, equal opportunity employers and that kind of thing. Fine, brilliant, cool. And, you know, that would have been the end of that. Um, but I think, I think we, we, we're, we're trying so hard and that's just the thing. Whenever you are, you are doing a campaign, it's one thing to go in there to have a half-assed approach to it. But for the love of Christ, there is no need to overthink, and there is no need to try too hard. Just, just come up with something simple. Remember one of the cardinal rules of advertising: kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's essentially what 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 is supposed to be used. Now, last week, the week before that, we went into heavy cultural sensitivity kind of thing. And, and yeah. this is kind of kind of following on that a little bit. I wouldn't wouldn't want to go into too much detail with it today, but essentially, um, well, the first thing is we know that when you do something like Pride Month, it's akin to doing it to doing our um, you know yeah uh, when it comes to doing day, um, or, our know, particular our, that, when it comes to know, celebrating when it comes to celebrating. Um, one's one's at, um, ethnic, ethnic background or how we got here, even yeah. when it comes to, to, to certain religious festivals and, and stuff like that. But yeah. the thing about it is the average individual who reads, nobody really, in all honesty, nobody I know will look at an ad and say, especially when it, as it relates to, especially as it relates to, to um, one's 
you know, ethnic background or something like that and say, well, or, or, or religious festival and say, oh yeah, you know, that's, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That really stayed with me. No, you're going to look at it. You probably admire it. It's aesthetics for like about 1.5 seconds and just move on to, to, the, to, to page two or page yeah. three. If you yeah. still, if you still buy newspapers, again, if you still buy newspapers. Or if you're just, you just scroll, you, you see it for like two seconds and keep scrolling. Yeah. That's, you see it for two seconds and you, keep, and, you, and you keep, and you keep scrolling and you don't do it. And then, and then you have, and then you have an ad that you look at and you're gawking at it for like about five, 10, 15 seconds. And that is when you know you've either done one out of two things. You've done a very good ad or a very bad one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and the first one that comes to mind is that infamous ad for, for, for KFC for emancipation, yeah. because it got, you know, that kind of, that kind of, cause it garnered so much notoriety and people were it thinking, my God. International. That's yeah. what happened. It went international. It was picked up by the Twitterverse internationally. I think months later, months later, months but later, it did. Yeah. It did go viral for the wrong reasons. That I oh, that was it. Black Lives Matter was in full force. This was like and two years was, ago. So that was two years yeah, ago. Yeah. So it got wrapped up in the Black Lives Matter movement that you know we show in. I can't remember what was it? Was oh yeah, it, it it was showing a chicken as a fist, as a fist. Yeah, uh, a chicken and, drumstick. And the shadow was a fist. The oh, fist, the, God, power, the black power fist. Yes. So it went. It was like, and they thought this was KFC, like the United States KFC, allowing yeah. that to be published. But thank God, somebody in the in the Twitterverse said, "No, no, this is from Trinidad." So it got <laughs> it got righted, it got righted, deflected from the KFC into the US company and squarely landed in the in the in the lap of KFC. But that had been dealt with long before. And it had you know eventually they found oh well okay, it had been changed and whatever, whatever. But what I was saying is coming back to Pride Month and the Burger King thing, is that yeah. you're absolutely right. And, and Quincy said this couple of times before, that just taking an ad, what we normally do, I mean, we're so set, the agency is so set in its ways. Let's come up with a creative visual and a snappy headline and put that as a social media post. But digital is a lot more than just throwing a post onto Facebook. And I've always said this, and I've been saying it for years, it's almost a decade now I've been saying this that it's, it's no longer the same game as, okay, you want to celebrate Pride. Now, there's a lot, of, a lot of the people who are not in agreement with Pride Month, not, not because they're being bigoted or anything against gays, lesbians, whatever. No, we're not saying that. Mm -hmm. What we're saying mm -hmm. is, is that they, they say, listen, you have to mean what you say. And just and and just because it's a month, then you change in your. I mean, for God's sake, Mortal Kombat. The game changed its profile picture to rainbows. Mortal Kombat, the game, you know, finish him, pull the head skulls oh. out. And, you know, so I mean, you're like, no, I don't think I don't think you're really getting the idea here. The idea here is you need to do something meaningful, and no brand that I know of has come out and said, okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna raise awareness for this or that, or, or here's, here we're gonna put some money this month to do this and make a big PR deal out of it. Nope, it's put a post, change a profile picture, and that's that. Most of them, not all, most of them, but locally. And I, I have a joke, uh, one of the memes I posted on my wall a couple of days ago, was that all the evil corporations <laughs> in the, in the pop culture verse, like the umbrella, the umbrella organization and P, PCP and 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 Wayland Utani and all these evil corps, so yeah. they changed so they changed their logos to rainbow colors to celebrate Pride Month. That's that's <laughs> essentially what it is, you know. 
So, so yes, nothing is, we don't say anything is wrong with, you know, acknowledging that this is the situation. But well, the least they could do is, is be sincere about exactly. it. Exactly. Sincerity is the problem. Now, as an ad agency, right? And we worked in an ad agency. Yeah. We worked in an ad agency where it was definitely Clinton esque. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> right. Right? So you yeah. never, you never, 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 you know, said, hey, boy, that boy gay. You know, or hey, boy, that, that, that would be a little lesbian. I mean, it, it was not important. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't important. But it wasn't a big deal to, to make a big deal out of it, you know? But that yeah. also kind of counts against the agency being sensitive to these things, which is why you get... Which is why you get Burger King top, tops and bottoms, you know, because you, you, because I'm pretty sure inside that agency is a don't to, don't talk, don't tell, don't ask, don't tell situation, you know. Hey, you're gay. What are you thinking, this dude? That sucks. <laughs> really? Well, you're like, dude, that sucks. <laughs> I I guess listen. You see, again, if we're coming up, the thing about it is that working in, working in the in, in ad world, in ad land, it's it's such a cloistered kind of environment. Mm -hmm. And um, to to paraphrase um, the words of a former U.S. president, Lyndon Johnson, advertising when we come up with ideas, it's a lot like peeing on our leg mm. and our legs. It's hot to us. <laughs> but it doesn't do anything for anybody else. Well, unless and, you film it. Well, unless you film it and put it on all your files. That is a different <laughs> um, story for another day. If you Amber that video, heard. Amber heard. Amber heard. Amber heard. Oh, Was that heard? I heard? I heard, I heard nothing. Something, something stuck in my throat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, but a dog stepped on the beat. Um, yeah, so all I'm saying is that it you you you're in that kind of environment, and to us, everything, every idea that we come up with is 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 a potential showstopper. It, it's something that's going to make people sit up and take notice because we're sitting here and we're thinking, yeah, this is great, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, this is something that we could we could work with, oh, brilliant, you know, and we and we and we collectively. Um, Grab our genitalia and say, "This is this is this is good. This is good. This is excellent." Yeah. And 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 we go ahead with it and we run with it, only to be told, "Hey, boy, that is a semen pile of horseshit, boy. <laughs> what, what what were you thinking? No tone deafness. <laughs> Hello. No 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 no. That that not work in. So that which is why I've always said, which is why I've always said that um." Who was it that said that, I think it was David Ogilvy who said it, that your consumer, your wife is your consumer or something to that effect? You are not writing it for your, for your, for your contemporaries. You are not writing an ad for, for your colleagues. You're not doing anything like that. You are doing an ad for your you know, regular people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even then, and you've got to do it in such a way that it caters to as much of a, of a broad base as possible, even if you were talking about the LGBTQ community. It is not a monolithic group. Yeah. You are going to have a lot of diverse individuals within that group as well, yeah. just as you would find um, diverse individuals in the black community, as you would in the mm. Hispanic community, yeah. they're not they're not monolithic. They're not monolithic um, beings, as it were, or, mm. or structures, as it were. You're going to find that, and that's what you need to do. And you need to find out. You got to find out the pulse, the pulse of, of what people of what people are saying. I, I think it's sad, though, that you know, in a, in in, in as 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 progressive, I wouldn't say woke, because woke mm. is a, is is a word that's been cheapened with overuse. No, no not but, only that, it it has become it has become sullied by yeah. 
by the, by the by the 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 virtue signaling. You see, the virtue yeah. signaling is a problem where you must you it is a, a fad and a trend to to, to screen work. But you know, again, it comes back to a, a brand just saying, um, just posting a, a, a profile picture with rainbow colors and saying fait accompli, just like you yeah. going and tweeting that you should cancel Amber Heard is the same thing. You know, it's it, 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 it's 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 just because you can do it by typing a keyboard warrior kind of situation doesn't make it woke. You see. Yeah. Woke is a is a is a at least from what I understood in the beginning, woke is an understanding of you know a, another person's you know struggles and and their problems and the issues that you can you can help with, you know it's a it's it's a focusing on what can I do to make my fellow man better, you see, but now it's become this this kind of where you know we have to virtue signal everything and and it, it always almost like they say well you know i i have issues with somebody like um um uh what's his name from star trek next generation um you're talking about boy. rick berman no young boy young boy actor um will wheaton wesley right wheaton will, will wheaton yeah I love yeah. Will Wheaton. He's a nerd. He's been on the internet from when the internet started doing stuff. But right. you know, when he starts going things like, I will punch a Nazi when I see one. I'm like, dude, no, you won't. You're an actor, first of all. And second of <laughs> all, everybody's screaming fascism here and fascism there. You don't even know what the word means. You don't even know what it actually means to be fascist. I mean, just because you can parrot somebody else's tweet or retweet and say, yeah, I agree with. Let's punch Nazis up right and center. That 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 that's not being woke in my mind. That that's yeah. just being ridiculous. That's just being stupid. But anyway, we, we we moved off the topic a little bit. What I'm saying is, is that yeah. a brand trying to be woke is the problem. You see? I, don't try. I, I, this is it. Don't try. Don't try to be yeah, woke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you're virtual signal. What you yeah. need to do is you need to. You need to consistently position yourself as somebody. Okay, so for example, uh, I think we had mentioned this before. Yeah. A couple of episodes back with Tracy. I had mentioned that the um, uh, one of the brands, oh God, which brand was this now? Uh, it was a deodorant brand, uh, not Speedstick. Was it it wasn't speed guard? stick. With, no, it was could have been speed stick. It wasn't right. Could have been right guard. Gillette. Gillette, right. Gillette. Gillette. Sorry, Gillette. Gillette yes. shaving. And Gillette went hell hard a couple of years ago by saying, you know, right, you know, being a man is this and that. And they were terrible, terrible ads, at least in my opinion. Yeah. They were terrible ads. Yeah. And, yeah. and they really went overboard, hitting you over the head with, you, man, are a bad person. Bad person, bonk. Go to Honey Jail, bunk. <laughs> but like, isn't, isn't that didn't that, didn't a certain beer didn't a certain beer in Trinidad and Tobago attempt the same thing? And we talked about that, and we said, yeah, yeah. you said, and and you have to change your tactic very very quickly because you realize that you're just now alienating, not just you see, a brand has followers, a brand has advocates, a brand has. Um, people who will go to bat for them. But yeah. when you alienate them, and when you tell them stupidness and, and you, you mess with their their feelings or whatever it is, they will go and find somebody else. They will drop you like they're not they are not that tied to you to say that, oh well, okay, you're gonna tell me that uh, okay, I'll I'll just I'll just go and find somebody else. You know, I'll, I'll go and drink something else. Here, look, here, here's a Heineken. I'll drink that instead. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll bounce yeah. across. The but I mean, the thing about it is, is that, is that, when you do something for a brand, you need to be very, very, very careful. And we talked about this last week and the week before that. 
you need to be very, very careful that you are doing it within your own DNA and you're doing it for a reason. And the reason cannot be that just because five people on Twitter said, for example, um, you know, stag is, a, stag is a man's bear, you should not call it a man's bear, um, that's misogynist. You, you, don't, you don't fly, you don't panic and start screaming, oh my God, we need to change the tagline, we need to say it's everyone's bear. <laughs> what the fuck? No! No, they don't do that. Why are they? And, they, and, they, and they, the people who are drinking it, it's just like, what? What the fuck? What? 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 What happened here? Yeah, the, ironic, the ironic thing about it is, the ironic thing about it is, when that ad campaign, campaign first came out, and this came out back in the nineties, and it said that stag was supposed to be a man's beer, right? It turned out that you had a sizable number of women drinking it. Lot, lots of women. Lots, lots of, women. of women drank it. I, I, didn't, I, I, I joke. I joke with my men friends, and I laugh at them yeah. like, you know, you know, you're a woman, right? You're female, you have girls because you drink stag. <laughs> they don't like that. They want to hit the, they want to take the stag bottle and bust it over my head. But I mean, what, what was the thing if um, 10 to 1 is murder, tell the bottle? Yeah. What, what yeah. was the line in the song? Um, oh, God. Oh, and every man in the gang had a white handle razor. 10 and to 1 bottle. is murder. Bottle yeah, and stone. Bottle, bottle. bottle and stone belt. And like, but no place to shelter. Right. That's the one is murder. I have put the yeah, that's me. I mean, tell any stag drinkers that all these women. <laughs> Next thing I got, I got a bottle in my face, <laughs> a green bottle. But all right. Yeah. It, but what I'm saying is, um, what I'm saying is, is that we can't, we can't not acknowledge things, but at the same time, we need to be always aware. Be always aware. You can't, you know, like in case of Burger King, that's, that's not being aware of what's going on. That's just being, and in the case of last week with the, with the, um, with the Maggie ad, that's just not being aware. By the way, uh, we got some feedback from our good friend VCAT. I don't know what VCAT's real name is. I must ask her. I don't know if it's, it's, it's whatever it is. Or whatever, what is yes. it? Yes. And um, V says, she was like, she was very happy to listen to us. So we we're very happy that you listened to us. Well, we're um, glad you listened to me. That's great. That's she cool. said, she said, we had bigger problems than tablets filled with food. We have bigger problems in this country. And this is true. What, so, and it's even bigger problems than, than, than the prime minister posting a video of Kunta Kinte <laughs> to answer you know, back and this, to the opposition and, leader. Now, we don't talk politics on this channel. We don't talk politics. We don't, we don't. But what I'm saying, I only raised it because yeah. these are distractions from the real thing that's going on. Yeah. You know, the, the problems with the children's homes and various other things. So we don't want to get into that. But what I'm saying is the Hindu community needed to step back a little bit and say, this is not important. And Kamala need to step back and say, okay, so you mispronounced my name, big deal. Move it on. You know, it, 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 let's deal with the real problems. And, and again, think, a brand, a brand needs yeah. to do the same thing. Say, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's Pride Month. Um, we will do something for Pride Month. This is what we'll do, and that's it. You know, that's it. And, and keep it simple. You know, keep and then they just keep it simple. But you know it's coming, and this again. It's, it's, it's Trinidadians. I mean, it's, it's all over the world too, where people say things, people know that something is going to happen. We know hurricane season is, there, it's, is around the corner. We know rainy season is around the corner. We know when Christmas is. We know when carnival is. You know, you don't suddenly decide in January, carnival is in February, to say, well, I want to do a, a six week campaign. Yeah, but carnival is in <laughs> six weeks. You can't get you can't get anything of value like that. You need to come the year before and say, all right, what are our plans for carnival next year? Right? right? Let's work something out. And then when we get closer, we get a better budget and we cut down if needed. But we don't work like that. We work like, hey, we have budget now. Let's go and do a carnival campaign. And so you know your spread month every June. We know that. Okay. Okay. So this June. Do something, you know. You have it all set up since May, April, May, 
you have something set up ready to go for June. And if your idea is in in May is to have the two tops and two bottoms. <laughs> you have a month to come up with something else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I I I I don't know, man. I mean I have often wondered, like I said, if if you're doing if you're doing something like this, again, one has to ask the question, was any thought put into it? Obviously not. And that's that's one. Second of all, it's a question of, of being sensitive to that person, to, to that particular community's um, needs. And I think there is the beautiful thing about, about doing particular stuff, whether you're doing a brand or stuff like that, is not necessarily to talk about you know, one's wokeness or to come up with any virtual signaling or anything like that. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. But do it in a way, but do it in a way that people are not like, you know what? That was tastefully done. I enjoyed that. I I I I I see where you're going with this. I see where you're coming from. You were talking about people as brands. If the opposition leader had said, well, you know what? Okay, fine. Like you said. You mispronounce my name. You want to make fun of my name. That's brilliant. But the reality of the situation is that we have long lines of people waiting outside just so they can get jobs at cruise vessels. If that does not tell you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a whole. That's a whole. That's a, that, again, but this, you see, this is where, but this is where as a, as a, because politics as well. If you're advertising, if you're getting into, if you're getting, if you're in politics and you, and you want to advertise your brand as a as a politician, this is how you increase your political stock. This is how you do it because you relate to the needs of the people. But mm-hmm. this, in the way in which she she did it, it was just, it was just like you know because but that, but then again it, it's bacchanal, and as Trinidadians we we love we love bacchanal we love confusion we love all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But again, I think we were, we were just straying off topic. But yeah, but well, we don't really have a topic is, today. But, but no, yeah, we don't have, 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 uh, have a topic. But the thing about it is, you're doing something. You're doing. You 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 are a brand by yourself, and you have to to adapt to the times. You have to, and you also need to to, to find out what it is that the people are concerned about these days. People mm-hmm. right now are concerned about you know. Um, am I gonna am I gonna have a job uh, uh, a month from now? You know, people have been laid off. We still don't know. We still don't know really. I mean, what is the the, the unemployment rate in Trinidad and Tobago right now? No one seems to know, or no one wants to say, because that would involve if 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 the, if the real figures came out. I think a lot of people are gonna are gonna be genuinely worried. Well, you can you could surmise from it because of the various layoffs we've had over the no, last. No, we can surmise. Yes, you can surmise. But I mean, that you know. again is not the not the fo- not the focus of this particular that's podcast. Not focus, that's not the focus. Of the but that's podcast, not that's important, the important right now. Well, it is but important, but not for our podcast. But not for the podcast that we're, that we're right. doing. But we're just we're just we're just saying we're just saying that that if you if you're going to come up with if you're going to advertise yourself as a brand. Talk about the issues that matter to people the most. It's the same. Yeah. The, the, the same thing with respect to advertising. Come up with if you're coming up with an idea, then do it in such a way that you know it's going to relate to the people who who are going to who are going to buy your product. You're going to get into your brand. If you're going right. to say that, that, that you know you 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 you, you do something, do something. Um, it, you know, uh, it would be great. It's so- if we could, they so I keep coming back to no, but they keep coming back to in the 80s and the 90s, it was very difficult, very expensive to do something, you know, out of the channel. So to do something in the newspapers, you have to put a lot of money out there. To do something on the P the TV, you know, one of the interesting things is. We as kids in the eighties did not really know, did not have a clue that watching GI Joe and Transformers was literally the toy company 
giving us a half an hour long ad. You see, that, that's the level in those days of trying to hook kids into buying, you know, toys and whatever, right? I mean, the right. old hardback man still buying toys. But the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, is that now you have so many ways, so many inexpensive. Look at us. We do a, we do a podcast here for zero money. It may sound kind of unappealing, but we don't spend <laughs> we don't spend a, a dime, really. Um, the, only thing I pay, the only thing I paid for is Zoom, and I'm paying for that because you know I have other meetings to do. So it's not like I'm not I'm not just doing it for for the podcast. But I mean, the thing is, is that we could. I don't have to do it with Zoom. You, you and I could do it some other way. But the thing is, yeah. is that we have. We we just said we just said decided to start, and a lot of agencies, you know, have per analysis paralysis, which is one of the famous comments, where you sit down, and you think about this thing, and say, well, maybe I, do. and they have kids, and this is what we started seeing way back in the turn of the, the millennium when YouTube came out, was that these guys started doing stuff on the, on their own, and Ralph Bash Bashi said it. I keep coming back to Ralph Bashi, the, the, the famous animator. Ralph Bashi, yeah. um, director and producer of Cool World and and um, uh, and it came out with the it? animated version of the, first, the animated version of Lord of the Rings. Don't yes, and, and um, Felix the Cat was it Felix the Cat? The crazy world of Felix the Cat. Fritz. Did he do that? Fritz. Fritz. It was Fritz, Fritz the Cat. Right, Fritz. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Fritzky Fritz. And he said in an interview. Almost 15 years ago, that's 15 years ago, he says, you don't need an animation studio anymore. You have everything in the box, right here in the box. The box might look pretty now. It might be really, really small. It might actually fit in your pocket. You have it right here to do whatever you want, right? So knowing that, why agencies still thinking, oh, well, you tell me this. Now, now, mind you, that's not going into the face of what I just said about being on brand. You need yeah. to still be on brand. So you still have some rules that you need to stick to and you can't break some rules. But what I, what I, what I come back to, and actually it just brings me to what I was going to say. We have a listener, Philip Alexis, who used to be a student with me, with me at Costat. Philip is a fantastic animator. Well, he's not, he's not doing animation. He was doing film before. Philip is doing everything that he... He's just decided, I'm going to do whatever I want. And Philip started doing graphic design with me, and he was very, very talented, very good. And now he, he was doing um, film work, and now he's just jumped into animation. He's just doing this animated stuff on his Instagram page. Um, I think his Instagram is... I'll put it in the, in the notes below, if I remember. Um, okay. Uh, but Philip sent to say, and I sent you that flex art, P H L E X underscore A R T. Philip Alex right. Alexis Artie. Now Philip said that we sound a lot like Joe Rogan <laughs> and yeah. those kind of podcasts. So he, yeah. he he doesn't think we're unappealing at all. He he actually likes it and he thinks we're doing very well. So thank you, Philip. Thank you very Thanks, much Philip. for Appreciate the great feedback. So we do get a lot of positive feedback. Um, he did say that he wanted to come on and talk about animation, but we're coming down to the end of the season. I want to kind of cut off now because we want to take a break, but because we've been going full tilt. This is actually the longest we've been doing episodes. Yeah, I mean, for. The longest, this is the longest streak. This is our 20th episode. 20th uh -huh. episode. I just want to say that um, uh, we, one of one of my Twitter followers, I think he's based in in, in New York actually, uh, and his name is Thomas. I don't know his last name, but uh, he happened he stumbled upon our podcast and he likes it very much. So a special mm -hmm. shout out to him. And, wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did he retweet you or something? Did he comment on something on Twitter? I wanted to hear more. I said, well, you know, you can you can check out um, the Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We're there. We're there on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and you can listen to us on YouTube. So yeah, uh, you can okay, listen to okay. all the 
So yeah, he just he just listened to us by, by accident and he really it's liked not, what it's he not Blue Man too. Not Blue Man too. No. It's not Blue Man too. Yeah. No. It's 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 Thomas. Um he I think his his handle is Audio Might. Because he deals specifically with, with audio related audio related um things. And um yeah, but but he, he really He's listening to us, and he and he really likes what what, what he's what he's heard so far. Well, thank you, Audio Mike. That's yeah, awesome. So, thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate it. You know, so we, we we're getting a, we are getting we are getting good good um good feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can only get, we can only get better. We can only get better with time. I mean, mm. it's something that we've you know I've always said that if we're if we're, if we're doing something like this, it's 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 it's, it's literally a labor of love. Because yeah. we're doing Jesus it Christ, situation. Jared, you tweet so much. Jeez, I don't tweet as much <laughs> as you. Audio might, yes, here it is. Audio M I T E. So go and follow yeah. Thomas, audio might, and tell him yeah. you sent you. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. So yeah, we, I mean, he follows. Uh, oh, he follows me, and I follow him. So yeah, you yeah. can follow him if you want. Yeah. So That's yeah, good. no. But the thing about it is, the thing about it is, as far as Twitter is concerned, I am. I don't know. I'm a, I, I'm 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 a, I'm a whore when it comes to Twitter. I am just addicted <laughs> to it. See, <laughs> you know I what I mean. Yeah, that. I can see that. I can see that. I'm being um, honest. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, so, and sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, go on, go on, go on. Sometimes, sometimes, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're really good, you can, you can tweet. Um, you can say hi to 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 somebody famous and. And sometimes, and more often than not, that person will will um, tweet back or mm -hmm. like your tweet. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's what happened mm -hmm. a couple of days ago. I mean, um, remember? Does the name Lauren Holly ring a bell? Mm -hmm. Lauren Holly. Mm -hmm. Lauren you know? Holly. Yes. Lauren of Holly. Course. She was in Dumb and Dumber. Yes. And before, right, and before that, she was in Dragon: The Bruce Lee Story. So I just told her, you know, have a have a good day, be safe, and. And she she liked the tweet, so yeah, that's 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 cool. So yeah, so you know. Oh, Jared. Oh, you know it's not <laughs> Lauren Holly, right? It's one of her tweets. It, it's oh, it's no, it's it's actual. It's actually her. I mean, I'm yeah. sure of it. Yeah. Um. Right. So we want to kind of wrap up now because we we kind of went on and on and on. I hope you guys didn't mind this kind of. Stream of consciousness. It's, kind it's of, a stream of you know. consciousness, sort of freewheeling, kind of James yeah. Joyce, James Joyceian kind of. Um, because we were just we were just launching into non secretaries and and ever so often we slid into irrelevancies. But I think yeah. I think by and large we were pretty much stuck to what it was what it is we, we we were trying to say. So that 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 should count for something. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we always talk about we talk our our main focus really is about advertising but we can't talk about advertising without talking about the attendant um parts to advertising like marketing the impact that it has on 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 people um mm -hmm. and 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 the regular and the regular uh what what would regular people think about it because I think I think and but what what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to demystify, if you will, trying being the operative word, demystify what advertising is, because people yeah. figure that it's just a simple case of of coming up with a campaign, an award winning campaign, writing writing the copy, the relevant copy, and boom, you have an ad. It's it's, it's yeah. but it requires it's, a lot more. Yeah. It requires a lot more sweat, especially now, oh, especially now where it's very sweat. very very competitive. It's it very is. competitive, you know. You 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 you're competing with the boy with the box or the guy with the box. Oh, <laughs> that's essentially what it is. Oh, Jared, but, you're terrible. I now realize why you're giggling like that. The guy with the box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Device in your own head. Doing goody. <laughs> I, I got a lot of likes, by the way. I got a lot of likes for my cobra, my cobra come um my cobra post. Um, Three, four years ago. Yeah. And, yeah. Time, and I got a lot of likes. And and Sean says I'm probably gonna end up in Facebook jail again. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, before we go, what we wanna do, uh, we wanna establish now, Jared, you and I need to establish 
when we cut in this day, when we cut in this season off, um, I want to do a live show. I really, really want to do a live show, but I don't want to do it like how we did it before. I don't want to do it in Starbucks because it was too noisy. But I think if we went into rituals, which is right up the road, it would be quieter. So I don't know if you want to try to do that next week and we call that the end of the season. What do you think? Sure. I think it's yeah. a great idea. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's so, go for it. Um, what do you want to do? You want to do like uh, the Wednesday? What, what, what we did? We did it on Tuesday. When did we do it? We did it Tuesday or Thursday. I can't remember. We did it when we did when we did the final. No, well, when we did the live thing, we did it on a Friday, a Friday afternoon. Right. So what I'm that saying is, was, yeah. If you want to do it, do it like that again, where we don't bother to do Wednesday next week, we just do Friday, and we do. Yeah. Uh, you and I just go and sit down in your chairs and we do a live show and we end off the season like that. How's that sound? That sounds, that sounds like a plan. We can do that. I don't know. I, what I could do is I could invite, well, obviously people like Abby ah, can't come because they're in pause. Um, and Damien flew out, so I don't know if, if, if Damien's coming back to next week. But I mean, we could certainly invite um, anybody who wanted to come and join us in rituals. Yeah, just, you know, hang on with you us. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we'll do it camera-wise because it will be a bit of a switch, but we'll, we'll figure something out because I realize people like that, especially in the YouTube sphere or YouTube channel, we get a lot more views for obviously people seeing our face, but we apologize because, you know, we do Yeah, that, we're we not exactly... That, we're, we're not... We're, we're faces we're not for matinee reading. idols. Yeah, 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 we're not matinee idols. We're not... We're not, yeah, we're we're not I don't, don't expect to find us on the cover of People's Sexiest Men Alive anytime soon. That's not going to happen. So no. I'm too sexy for this shit. <laughs> too sexy for this shit. Too although, sexy. although I will say this, Ian Reid does bear a, a bit of a resemblance to a certain Tom Cruise, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's, but that's not important. That's, that's not important right now. <laughs> you should go and see uh, Maverick, though. Top Gun Maverick. I have, I have seen it. Oh, you have seen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. I like it. I, like I think it I want much. to go and see it again, but you know, but I don't really yeah. want to go by myself. But anyway, I went with my eldest son, and he was he was quite impressed with the technical aspects of it. He was like, you can see he's 14, and he says, you know, if you looked at this movie and you looked at a Marvel movie, you can see where the Marvel movie like, okay, like Iron Man, where the scene with Iron Man flying with the two planes, even though that's yeah. way back in 2008 or whatever it is. You right. can tell that that's not real. You can tell, right? Yeah. Because he yeah. says, when you look at this movie, it looks real. You, you, yeah. he, says, he says it's obvious that they didn't use computer graphics or anything like that. It just looks, it looks like. Anyway, yeah. but again, that's not important right now. Go and see that, the movie. No, I... I, I look like Tom Cruise. Yes, I do. Um, what's the song for sure. Risky Business? <laughs> oh, good Lord. Are you going to take all the, all the records off the shelf? <laughs> yeah. old yeah. time rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but don't, don't try anything with your tiny whiteies. Eh? That's not going to work. So, I don't wear no, tiny no. whiteies. I don't wear anything. Okay. I don't wear I anything. Don't right need, I did not need to know that. And that's the end of the show. Thank you very much. That's the end of the show. Thank you. But yes. before we go, we need to define something because the way we do this is we say, um, we, we use the line from airplane. Um, yes, we use doctor. This doctor. This uh, it's sure this this man needs to go to a hospital. A hospital. Yes, it's a big What's white that? building. <laughs> big white building. Really? Yeah. But they put a lot of sick people in it, but that's not important so, right now. So, giant media agencies need to be what's the word? Um, agencies need to be agencies need to be not so much just like I said, it's about it's about simplicity. It's about yeah. simplicity. Agencies simplicity. need to be simple. What's that? Simple. What's that? Put an idea. Put an idea across that once they see it, everybody will understand it. And they'll appreciate it for what it is. There's no need to overthink it. But that's not important. That's right not now. important right now. Thank you very much. We had a great session today. We call this a chill yeah. session. There's not much of a session. chill session, but maybe I'll put some music behind it and make it sound chill. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do, 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 do that. 
copyright yeah. free, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks, John. I will thanks again. Uh, hopefully see you in person next week and we will have a live show next week. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 All right. Got it. Good. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for see listening, you later, guys. everyone. Thanks see for ya. listening. Appreciate it. See ya.